The biggest learning curve that I've hit recently is trying to code something for real users. Because when you're building a project that only runs on your machine, it's honestly kind of easy. Because you can get AI to write all of the code pretty much, and you don't deal with hosting, random errors, or your code acting in ways you didn't expect. But once you actually start building for other people, that's where the real learning happens. I'm currently working on a project that solves a problem that I've personally had. And so I figured that if I have it, other people probably have the same problem too. So instead of working on this project and writing all the code and just keeping it as source code in a GitHub repo, I'm actually trying to get it deployed so that other people can download it and use it. And that's the mindset that I think more CS students should adopt. But let me be clear, you don't need to launch a startup or the next Facebook. So don't let yourself get intimidated and overwhelmed by what I'm trying to say. But basically what I think you should do is try and launch something that solves a problem on a small scale. So basically just just try and find some niche thing that will help you as well as people that are similar to you. For some inspiration, you can try launching your own Chrome extension or a CLI tool or a widget or a small mobile or web app. Just try and deploy something that's useful for you and for people like you. And again, don't worry about it being really good or having a ton of features. Just try and get it deployed and functional. Then you can worry about UI design and adding different features, but don't let that stuff slow you down at the start. And if you're wondering, why you should even bother doing this. Imagine you're applying to a software engineering internship and you have actual links to live projects that recruiters can go ahead and check out. And it definitely helps if these projects have actually helped real people and dealt with users and scalability. And all that stuff is really rare and makes you stand out a lot. And especially in this job market, that kind of impact and real world applicability is a lot more valuable on your resume than some random school project that you were forced to build. So get off localhost, try and build something for real users because you'll learn more and you'll stand out a lot more as well. Okay, this one's not as flashy, but it definitely works. I often find myself overwhelmed with trying to keep up with everything as a CS student. So all the grinding leak code and building projects and sending job applications, prepping for interviews, you know, all the stuff that we unfortunately have to dedicate a lot of our time to. So if you're like me and you feel like you've got a million things going on, I'd honestly recommend keeping a progress notebook. You can use it to track your leak code progress, like what problems you're solving or what patterns you're starting to recognize. You can also write down what's left on your side projects with clear daily or weekly goals. You could even jot down your job updates, interview tips, or small resume tweaks. Basically treat it like a career hub. The point of this is to give your effort some direction. And when you look through it, you should be able to say, okay, here's what I've done, here's what I've learned, and here's what's next. This way, when you start to burn out or you feel like you're not doing enough, you can look at your notebook and be like, oh yeah, I didn't even know dynamic programming two months ago, but now I've solved 10 problems using it. And I think that kind of stuff is really good for motivation, but also just to keep you on track and organized. And you don't need a very perfect or aesthetic system. You can just use Notion, a Google Doc, the Notes app, basically whatever works for you. For me, there's something about a physical notebook that I can actually carry around and write in that makes it a lot more fulfilling. But overall, I think just having a system like this in place makes the whole journey feel more real, like I'm actually building something and not just aimlessly grinding. And so this is kind of more of a boring tip, but I think it'll help you stay a lot more consistent and just keep you sane while doing all of these things at once. Okay, this one might be a little controversial, so I'm curious to think what you all say about this in the comments. But we all know that the software engineering job market is really tough right now. And trust me, I'm in the same boat as a lot of you. I found myself in this cycle where since I don't have any experience, I'm not able to get any experience. And so what I did, and this is where I say it's kind of controversial, is I lowered my standards for experience very significantly. So you're probably wondering, what does this even mean? Well, I was able to land a summer internship about a month ago, and the downsides of this internship is that one, it's unpaid, and it's also not exactly software engineering. I'd say it's more like web development, but I took it because I was having a hard time actually getting a software engineering internship, and I figured it's better than nothing. And even though I could easily lie on here and try and say that I finally got a software engineering position and I'm getting paid for it, I want you guys to know that we all have to start somewhere. So if you're in the same position, just looking to get anything on your resume, I recommend trying to do something similar to what I've done if that's possible in your position. Obviously, if you need 
income don't work for free but if you're just a student trying to build experience this can make a pretty big difference and linkedin is really full of these kinds of roles it has tons of unpaid positions weird job titles startups with no funding and typically you might not even apply to these and they might not even like be on your radar but if you do apply to them the upside is you have a pretty big shot at actually landing them and i try to look at it like doing research with a professor as an undergrad you probably won't get paid but you'll make connections and you'll have something valuable to show for it and it doesn't have to be like an unpaid internship really if you're struggling to find anything then just take whatever you can get so something like a cs tutor or doing research or volunteering to build someone's website or like i said these really niche internships because right now if you're in the same boat as me it's not about finding the perfect software engineering position it's about stacking your resume with anything that you can get because all of this adds up and it'll put you in the position to finally get what you actually want to become. All right, so if you're a computer science student, I'm pretty sure everyone is going to run into this phase where you're grinding interview prep, working on personal projects, maybe even making connections, but it still feels like nothing is happening. You're not getting any calls back, no one's responding to your emails, you're putting in all this work, and yet everything seems very silent. This is what I call the void. It's a space where it feels like you're building something in a vacuum, and no matter what you do, it seems like you're getting nowhere. But here's what I realized about this. It's mainly just a filter is where most people quit and stop coding and stop applying they burn out and all that stuff but just know that this void is completely normal it's just a part of the process and everyone i know who's actually made it through this field had to sit in this silence for a lot longer than they actually expected so if you're in that space right now where your effort feels very invisible and like nothing is going your way just know that you're not actually behind and you're not failing you're just in the part that no one talks about because it's not fun to post about and the only way through is to just keep moving and keep coding and keep applying even to jobs that ghost you and keep refining your resume because trust me eventually the silence will break and if you grinded throughout all that time in the void you will land that opportunity Okay, so getting a degree does not mean that you will know how to code. Nowadays, there's a ton of people graduating with a CS degree that can't even write basic stuff without using AI. But luckily for us, this means if we hammer down on the fundamentals and really know all the underlying concepts of coding, we can stand out a lot in today's job market. So if you're wondering how you can actually learn the skills you need to show employers that you are actually a good developer, well, that's why I use today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant helps you get smarter every day with thousands of interactive lessons in math, science, programming, data analysis, and AI. Brilliant is a learning app designed to be uniquely effective. Each lesson is filled with hands-on problem solving that lets you play with concepts, which is a method proven to be six times more effective than watching lecture videos. Brilliant's first principles approach helps you build understanding from the ground up, and a perfect mix of engaging problems, competitive features, and daily encouragement keeps you motivated and on track. Plus, all content on Brilliant is crafted by an award-winning team of teachers, researchers, and professionals from Stanford, MIT, Caltech, Microsoft, Google, and more. Brilliant also helps you build your critical thinking skills through problem solving, not memorizing. So while you're building real knowledge on specific topics, you'll also be becoming a better thinker. And Brilliant's newly updated programming courses are a great way to build a foundation in coding, get experience with real world applications, and learn to think like a programmer. Brilliant helps you build timeless problem solving skills to thrive in the evolving world of programming. Brilliant also allows you to learn to think like a programmer by breaking down complex problems into manageable chunks of code. You will also develop an intuition for computer logic as you learn to design and debug real programs. And you can also get familiar with Python and start building programs on day one. So to try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash lattice or scan the QR code on screen. Or you can click on the link in the description and you'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. So once again, huge thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring this video and thank you to all of you watching. I hope you found some sort of value in this video and that's all I have for today.